environments have received a lot of attention since the early part of this century. Spaces like Second Life offer teachers and students the opportunity to leave the classroom walls behind and explore learning in a new way. Virtual learning environments provide not only a space for collaborative teamwork and participation at a distance, but they also provide the tools necessary to make your environment work for you. As a user-driven environment, Second Life puts you in control. Everything in Second Life is put there by a user like you. Everyone you see is really connected through synchronous communication. From building 3D objects and action scripts, to streaming media, voice over IP, spaces like Second Life offer all the tools necessary to make learning happen. State Polytechnical in Alberta has students and instructors building their in-world repository of real-world equipment. Dr. Martha Burkle is the Cisco Chair of E-Learning at the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. Martha tells me in a recent in-world interview and tour that SAIT has eight instructors and a group of students designing everything in sight. She tells me that the blended learning that happens here allows students and instructors to interact with the tools they've created here. An outdoor lecture theater allows students an only slightly more formal learning environment. Instructors engage students with large-scale interactive models. Next stop the greatest sound system in Second Life. Sound design students use this equipment they've created to test their knowledge of audio principles. And it goes on for SAIT, from the objects repository, to the robotics lab, to an interactive classroom for self-evaluation and access to resources. Dr. Burkle explains that the virtual classroom is an engaging space for students and offers distance students the opportunity to see their colleagues. Martha suggests that any dry subject matter can be made interactive through the space SAIT has created. But this is just one of the islands SAIT has developed. In another part of the online world, SAIT has developed another island for media and television production. With lighting and cameras built by SAIT's multimedia students, SAIT was able to develop a television studio for a fraction of the cost of the real thing. Cameras and lighting boards operate like the real thing, giving students a chance to interact with equipment outside their financial reach. Outside is Western Town, where crews of students operate dollies and cranes to create their masterpieces. So what do the students think of all this? Dr. Burkle says they love it. 
Bryant and Stratton College has a history of flexible learning for their students. With campuses across the United States and a strong offering of online courses, Bryant and Stratton were eager to develop a space in Second Life. Scott Trailer is the Director of Admissions for Bryant and Stratton's online education. We went live with it in March, so really only um, you know several months now. Um, so it's a relatively new thing for us. This is probably the sixth or seventh open house that we've had. Mainly people are logging in and kind of walking around and then when they're ready they kind of come over and then they want to talk so it's it's been it's almost kind of like a real life situation where you know they're a little nervous when they first come in they you know we just kind of have to give them their distance the other building over here is what we called our um open house building uh originally we thought that everyone would kind of congregate congregate in here and want to chat with us and everything what we found is that when students come to the campus they really kind of want to walk around and check things out this is the degree center um you know, I think really Second Life is all about being able to interact within the environment. And uh, and so there's different things that are here that are available. So you can click on um, some of the different things that are on these bookshelves and it'll give you a note card with some additional information or it may link you out to a, one of our websites, uh, pages on our website, something like that. But here's just where you can get some a little bit more information about each program. One of the newest additions to the Bryant and Stratton campus is the amphitheater. Uh, so our Dean of Student Services is uh, very interested in using this and will actually help her uh, set up speaking engagements and uh, so if we find let's say somebody that's a for a criminal justice students maybe we find a you know a police officer or a, you know um, a detective or something like that to come in and actually talk about their real real world experience um, in that in that particular position um, everyone can have come out here have a seat and listen to them talk ask questions and uh, some other things we plan on using it for it what we've been doing is the Monday before classes start uh, before they start getting into doing their homework and all that kind of stuff we kind of have like a new student um, reception probably isn't the right word it's kind of like a, it's a real informal time we will have a lot of music there again and just a place for everyone to get to um, meet some of the other staff members meet each other and uh, get to know each other before classes start on, on that Wednesday and it's just another way to kind of tie them in and bring them into the Bryant Stratton experience and um, just everything that we have to offer. I think one of the biggest challenges for us in using it would be the um, having to be here for a specific time or place that really limits um, things and so when you do something in a world like this you know you really limit the population so I think that's probably if you're looking to do anything in here that it that would probably be the biggest challenge um, and uh, but doing community type events, you know, where it's more voluntary um, and people have the time or the, um, the dedication to come in, you know, those are, you know, I think that's where, at least from our perspective, that's where the, the, um, the benefit is to offering it to our students. Bryant and Stratton believe so strongly in these benefits that this year they held Second Life's first graduation in world. And who better to deliver the first commencement speech in Second Life but Philip Rosdale. Uh, yeah, again, thanks very much for having me. Uh, this is a total delight. Uh, I think the fact that Second Life can be useful in education is just uh, amazing. So thank you very much. The U of S has been experimenting with Second Life for a few years now and currently has several projects on the go. We've got a big research project underway, and uh, as part of that, we're looking at how people uh, operate and create communi communities in self-directed learning environments. And so, what could be a more natural place to build a self-directed learning environment than in, in world? Kirk has developed several areas of interest within their space. The Welcome Center provides information and contact info for the Educational Communications Program at the University of Saskatchewan. Another part of the Welcome Center helps new users develop their skills within Second Life. So basically, you just click on them and, and it shows you how to do different things. So for example, we felt that it was important for people to come in and self-directedly learn how to move your avatar or how to chat, or how to do different things. And, and this little 
area helps people with learning some of those basic skills. What we've found in other environments, in formal learning environments, and to a certain extent now in non-formal environments, um, is that tra technology has to become transparent before people start making good use of it in self-directed ways and building community with other people. I mean, technology is, in essence, in many cases, a barrier to people, especially people who are new. And once it disappears, then the learning aspects, the self-directedness, the, the and and the community aspects of what are going on have a chance to take hold. But as long as they're fighting their way through technology, um, uh, they're paying attention to that and not on on really what the technology is to be used for. Does that make sense? This is basically the instructional area. And this is a this is a place that will uh, groups will gather and uh, we'll have sessions and people will learn things. Uh, for example, building skills, um, movement skills, all different types of training, um, scripting, or anything that that you want to learn can basically happen in this space. You just need to come into this space and attend a, a presentation or listen to somebody or get together like we are. I mean, we don't need a lot of skills for what we're doing today. We're just getting together and, and we're having a discussion or a, a little meeting. We're not building. Um, so as we, you know, dependence on our needs um, would be the, the skill level that you would need in this. People act particular ways in formal learning environments, and they act a little bit differently when they get into when they're directing their own learning. And we want to make sure that we're seeing uh, self-directedness in action, not just compliance to, to formal expectations. To uh, meet people and to gather and to learn things the way that I have in this space has been amazing for me, and that's one of the reasons why I'm I'm uh, interested in it. For example, uh, Rick and I didn't really know each other at all before we we, uh, we met in this space. And uh, we really knew our avatars before we actually knew each other. And uh, it's been kind of a neat neat way of, of doing these things. And, and uh, you know, it, it brings people together in ways which I believe um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I think Second Life itself has a limited shelf life. I mean, who knows? How far it'll go, and we we all know that you know relatively crude graphics, difficult, but but they what they've got right, I think, is similar to what the internet got right. Was anybody can come in here and make up anything they want, uh, and so that level of user ownership of the space um, is is an incredibly powerful notion. But I really think that learning environments in the future are going to be 3D. I think they are going to be immersive. I think we're going to find ways that we will express ourselves in these ways because I think it's a natural desire to project ourselves into spaces. Even if this turns out to be a really powerful learning environment, <laughs> we really do realize that um, Second Life isn't going to be the end-all, be-all engine for virtual learning environments, right? But what we learn here is going to uh, inform what we do in other environments somewhere else. And, and in the end, it's not so much the direct payback of this as how it informs our work and other people's work generally uh, when they use any kind of environment, uh, um, uh, whether like this or, or well beyond it. So I, I, it's, it's a good investment just from from that perspective, we're, we're learning loads and I know we're going to learn a lot more when we actually turn this into a learning space.